All right, my wife makes a lot of uh, these little stuffed animals for others, but a couple months ago she bought a book and decided she was going to make some higher-end ones for herself. They're actually knitted. And um, this video is about making a little bench for them. And I'll put a link to this book that she got um, because they're really neat little animals. Anyhow, I went out and I grabbed some scrap walnut that I had out in my barn. Um, it's scrap because basically uh, stuff that didn't dry flat. It was like six foot long pieces and shorter. And, uh, you know, I don't always I just stack it out in my barn to dry. And uh, sometimes you get some pieces on top that warp up pretty good. You can see the big cups in that and stuff. So I started to just kind of cut them down and flatten them down. I figured for this project I only needed a half inch thick stock. So um, I could at least get that out of them. So you can see I am. Um, cut them down, join them, get them flat on one side, and then a couple passes through the plane or just to get them so that they were down to a um, pretty much equal thickness, and then a pass through the joiner on each of them so I could just glue the two pieces together for the, the main parts of the rocker. You can see I've got, um, I put some masking tape on my clamps here to protect the area where the uh, glue drip line is. I found out it makes it a lot easier to clean up on these clamps when you do that. Um, otherwise, it's, it kind of sticks in the teeth there, and it's a real pain. Anyhow, a little bit of tight bond on there. And then it's time to just uh, clamp them together. And I, I am finding that these, uh, these straight body clamps give me a lot flatter glue up when they, um, you know, they, they lock like that and with the jaws in line. So you don't need extra boards on them to hold them flat and stuff. So a half hour later, it's all glued together there. You can see, and this is still a little bit oversized for what I want. But there you can see where the glue dripped on them. You just pull that tape off and throw it in the garbage. And you don't know mess or anything. They stay like new. So I'm just going to take a couple passes off of here to, to get it down to the final thickness. And, um... I have people ask me about that Wixie planer gauge all the time, and yes, it still works good, and I really love it. So then over to the CNC router, and this is actually the first pieces that have ever been run on there, so I was kind of nervous about this, that something might go wrong or something, because I'm still having trouble with the motors. Um, I haven't finished the update on the router video yet, because... Uh, I bought some motor, a motor on Amazon, and it was one of these Chinese closed loop steppers, and it just didn't meet the specs that it was sold to meet, so I've got to replace that. But anyhow, you can see the, the spindle comes on, and I'm just running this at real time. You can see I'm running it, um, I think it's only running about 60 inches a minute here now, which hopefully will be running four times that when I get done, but... I'm just using the standard uh, MLCS router bit too, so that's a problem. But, uh, I do love that mass, so very easy to set up and very easy to um, to use for running jobs and stuff like that. And um, probing and finding bit heights and stuff like that. And as you can see, that dust hood that I picked up really is doing a good job. Um, absolutely zero dust. Now in the beginning when I first started this up, you could hear that the uh, the spindle winding up and the machine running, you basically don't hear anything. It's not until you start cutting and turn on the dust collector that it gets noisy. So basically you can see everything's working now. Um, I am missing some switches that go on to the control panel there too. Uh, Amazon shipped the wrong switches out, so I had to return them and the right ones are on back order till the end of this month. And uh, that cooling seems to be working good. Uh, all the times I've run it, it's just stayed pretty constant. No real uh, big temperature spikes when running. It's fairly cool in my shop and, you know, even temperature. So I think that extrusion has enough mass there for what I'm doing. And I, uh, for these first cuts, I actually uh, didn't want to cut into the wasteboard. So I, I set this to be about 5 thousandths. Um, off the the actual spoil board there to, to work with so I wouldn't cut into it um, I haven't done the final surfacing of that yet or any of that but that's all coming in the final video about the router 
But anyhow, uh, from what I'm seeing here, I really am happy with this right now. I'm going a quarter inch deep on a pass here, but uh, in reality, with a good bit, I'll be able to go right through in one shot. And uh, I think this took uh, just a little bit over three minutes to cut as it is with two passes on it. So I should be able to do it in a little bit over a minute or even less than a minute once I uh, get everything sped up and stuff. So um, it is going to be a very handy machine to, to use for projects like this. So I was uh, really excited that everything went good this first run. And you know, the spindle here, it's a uh, really working good um, I've got a set at 14,000 rpm and um, you know Maso sets the speed and it waits for it to wind up and stuff and all that seems to be working good and all that extra dust collection really did help everything uh, no dust at all on the table you can see there so it looks like I'm um, just about ready with, to move on from this project here and uh, you know get going on with other things So you, you know you can pretty much see there that that piece of scrap wall that I was be able to get some nice half inch thick stock out of in the end and boy I've got a ton more of that to use up too so I did the, the first uh, pass on that one and I need two matching pieces so I'm just gonna flip that board around now clamp it down again and let the router run and you can hear it goes down it's really quiet and the spindle kicks in and i've got it set for 18 second delay before it starts moving and i'm gonna have to speed that up too so really i'm just uh you know this is just trying it out and i'm trying to see what i can get away with and i'll i'll work on speeds over time plus i think i'll be uh, installing another relay to turn my dust collector on automatically also when i get done here but, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, the second one cut and everything went well, no problems, no errors, um, you know, accuracy seems to be fine. The second cut was right on with the first one and stuff, so. Looks like everything's working good now and a little uh, pendant there, that works good too for getting things out of the way. Um, I have to work a little bit on the post processor for this too. I'm just running sheet cam to cut it, but there you can see the uh, two sides are cut out. And then over to that little jet sander, and uh, this is one of the reasons I got it for is, you know, making a lot of little parts on the router so I don't, I can just run them through. And I'm kind of jammed in a corner there because I've got the router twisted around and stuff, but you can see I, I ran one, uh, one run on the first side and then I flipped it over and uh, I've got about five thousandths to remove here and the parts will actually just fall right out so I just wanted to, to do that so that I wouldn't have any pieces flying if anything let loose there so and I don't have my tabs worked out because uh, I'm actually using sheet cam right now from my plasma table to do all the programming So there it is, uh, the sander worked good. Parts come right out after a couple pa thin passes on it. Uh, you see all the fuzz on the edge uh, from the bit and stuff, it's cleaned up and everything, so. Um, I'm really happy with that, uh, working pretty good. And some more scrap wood there, but you know, that's what you wind up with. And here are the, the two final sides. Um, I'm really pleased with how they came out and I decided to uh, check some dimensions on them and it, it turned out that when I programmed them I actually left five thousandths on the surface for a final pass which I never did so you can see I'm supposed to be 0.50 and I'm actually ten thousandths under that so accuracy is really good I gotta go over and empty the dust barrel now too and it's that's pretty easy to do um, just slide one out, slide the other one in. I got a bunch of planing to do, so I'm gonna. I wanted to get that changed over, and I did have one problem actually with my uh, dustbin level sensor. I had one time where it didn't actuate. 
I had it, the sawdust up to about six inches from the top. Actually, it's lower there, but and all of a sudden, like a tornado spout built up, just one straight spout of sawdust in the middle that caused the sensor not to go off. But otherwise, it's really worked good. So I tried to. Uh, I actually set it down to about eight inches now, so it's a little bit. Uh, I won't have that happen again. Hopefully. So now we got these other pieces. A couple more pieces of flattening out and straightening out and getting ready to go and one thing I did is I decided to, to run them through to, uh, to thickness them right for the slots and actually that turned out to be ten thousandths under the dimension plus a couple thousandths that I had originally left on my program for the first part so I'll show you in a second the second parts didn't really I had a problem with mom um, hitting the spoil board and then it's over to the uh, to the router table. And I've been enjoying this also. You know, just push the button and it makes everything easy to set and stuff. And that uh, Milwaukee router is just such a smooth router. Um, no vibration or anything. It's just a joy to use this table. So I got that set up, and I'm gonna go back and put some radiuses on those pieces so that they'll fit in the slots because I have I used a quarter inch diameter cutter to cut them out on the router so I need a, a eighth of an inch radius on the four corners so it'll slip right in there so it's really easy to you know set this up with a little push button thing there and then go to the fine thing you can go down you know like a couple ten thousandths at a time whether to get everything lined up easy so this has been working out real good too. So it doesn't take very long and um, it's nice that I got the dust collection hooked up to this now too uh, with that run I made down the middle of the shop so everything uh, pretty much has dust collection on it now. And all the tools are in the final place so I'm real happy. And then it's over to the saw to cut them to length and you know, another thing is this, uh, this miter sled that I bought. Uh, best thing I ever did was put that Craig stop on there. You can see how easy it is to set the cutting length and stuff like that using it. Uh, and it just makes it a lot lighter and a lot easier to grab onto and use. So I got the, the sides in and I'm going to put the back in. No, not that piece. Um, I got a wider piece that's a figured piece of walnut. It's got some figure in it that I'm going to use. So I do that up and it's over to the router again and uh, this is the uh, the second piece run on the router and let's see how that goes. Yep, you can see it. Uh, the router starts and uh, the spindle starts spinning up and then I turn on the dust collector but I'm going to automate that dust collector next. And I sped this up a little bit for the video, but that's about the speed it should be cutting at right there. And, uh, you know, everything went well. Uh, the only thing I noticed when I was done, like I said before, is I uh, forgot that I thinned this board down and I never changed the program. So you can see I did cut a couple thousands into the spoil board there with it, but that's all going to be finished off anyway when I you know get everything done on the router but there it is uh, you know it came out nice another another good uh, successful run I'll say and I had my fingers crossed on that one too and then it's time to go back and put some radiuses on everything so it'll fit in the slots on the side there And a little bit of sanding to get this back piece ready for some laser burning that I'm going to do. And then I started playing around with some different characters and letters. And I tried burning some, you know, fully burning them in and fill and stuff. And in the end I decided for a uh, just a outline letter. I don't really want them to be too, too noticeable. But I want them to be there so that... Um, these animals never really lose their name. My wife uh, used the names that the uh, knitting book had given to them. 
So I figured I'd just put it on the bench so someday in the future when, you know, somebody else may have this thing and uh, don't know who they are. Any little Ortor lasers really are fun. They, I get a lot of use out of them and I've had zero problems and they're, you know, real easy to use. So, And uh, one thing I, I will recommend if you do have one of these is that light burn really makes it much easier to use. There's a light burn. That's just so simple to use and uh, create artwork on. So I, uh, you know, see now there's going to be four animals on the bench here. I put their names and uh, what they are right there. So people will always know. And that little laser station, that's nice to be able to roll around and just work. It's too cold outside to roll it outside now, but, um, you know, it does work good. I still have to do some uh, fume exhaust on it for use inside. And on the back of it, I'm going to put my mark. So that, you know, that really didn't take that long at all with the laser once I got things set up and centered and stuff like that. And a little bit of cl final cleanup and sanding and stuff to get ready to assemble it. Putting some radiuses around the outside of it just to break the corners there. And again, you can see that uh, when you're out in the midair with the uh, with a small insert with the router bit, uh, the dust collection really doesn't do a whole lot. If I put a bigger insert in it, I could pull more dust. But I like to keep it nice and tight. So kind of everything fit together good. Um, I was real happy with it. You can see I slid it together and I did uh, spray a little bit of clear on top of those all the laser stuff first. And I sanded that down just so that would you know hold the black. And then I decided to pre-assemble it and put some of this polycrylic on all the joints where there'll be glue joints. Because I've got the joints cut and they fit pretty tight. And I know that glue is going to come out and make a mess. And you really can't get in there and clean it up. So I figure I'll throw a coat of polyacrylic on any area that's going to have glue. Just to protect it so I can clean it up and not have white spots in it. And I've been really enjoying having those drawers in the bench with all my tools accessible too. So now I'm going to do a glue up here and uh, just try to... Put some glue inside all these cutouts and actually on the ends of all those boards. It, it's kind of messy and most of it I know is going to get squeezed out. But one thing I noticed after putting the glue on the, the joints, they, they shrunk enough that they were really tight. I had to use a hammer to get them in there. So this thing will be put together to stay, I guess. So I think the glue just makes the, the ends expand when you've got a real tight fitting joint. And you can see I'm just putting it on in the hole and uh, on the outside. So I sped this up a little bit because it did take me a couple minutes to get it all together. And it's one of the reasons I like this Type Bond 3 because it's a, you know, it gives you a little time to work with it. Got everything with the edges just sticking out a couple thousandths there for sanding. And then I uh, decided to go back. I don't know how much glue is left in the joints after it all squeezed out and stuff. So I decided to put some of the 23 gauge pin nails in there just to go through those slots and into the sides to really reinforce so the thing will never come apart no matter what. And, you know, these pin nailers are really great because once you uh, put them in and uh, just sand over them a little bit, you really can't see them. You'd have to really look close to, to see the where the pins are. And I will say this little quarter cable, cable pin nailer still works perfect, no problems yet. So I'm real happy with that one. So there it is, uh, all glued up, and just took a. It did take me a little while to go back through and scrape all that glue out of the corners, but at least there'll be no lines. I wound up using the uh, razor blade to get it all out. 
And a little while later, I let the glue dry and time to go back and do some final sanding on it. You see, I left those pins stick out a little bit there. And, and everything needed a, a good sanding and get ready for the first coat. So I'm using that polycrylic like I use on everything because it doesn't have any smell. It's a real pain in the neck though for little things like this to keep it from dripping and running and stuff like that. But one good thing about on walnut is it keeps UV rays from uh, fading it out. So it'll keep walnut dark for a really long time. And there's the first coat. Yeah, you can see everything. Uh, you can barely see those letters in there, but if you get up close, you look really good. And then I had to do a lot of sanding on it just to get rid of any of the runs or bad spots or anything between coats. And then I threw a second coat on and uh, left it at that. But these little things like this are really a um, big pain to, to do with a brush and stuff like that. I have to find a little spray set up for it. Then I let that dry overnight and I did a good sanding with 320 and then, you know, back to this Johnson's Paste Wax. And I've been using this same product for probably 50 years now and uh, I just love it. It works good. I'll wax it now and then I'll go back in about two months when the uh, polycrylic's nice and hard and I'll sand it and wax it again a final time to get a real good shine on it. So there it is. Um, bench is finally done. You can see it's just a really nice uh, light engraving. I well, have to get on the right angle here, but um, just just got the names in there, and uh, you know they'll be there forever this way. And Laser did a really nice job. And a little bit of firewood left there on the side, you know. But I used most of the walnut, but you know some little scraps there will go up in the wood stove probably. And so that was, uh, you know, that was really a, a fun little project that uh, it's all done now and uh, ready to go up to the house. So I let it sit for a day and the wax to harden up and, you know, good buffing on it there. And you can see it's sitting on my next project. Those uh, walnut slabs under it are actually going to be my new dining room table that will be uh, I'll be building in a couple of videos pretty soon. And I let my wife put her little animals on it. And there they are. They've got a nice bench to sit on now instead of leaning up against the wall in the corner. She just has so much time in these little things. You can see all the layers of closing and buttons and stuff like that. She's got like hundreds of hours in each one and very expensive yarn also. These are, you know, definitely not kids' toys. But um, she's really enjoyed it and wanted to make something for herself and... Um, I'm real proud of what she did here. So, you know, it's meant to the nice way to display them, I think. And like I said before, if anybody's uh, interested in some higher, making some higher-end little animals, I'll put a link to this book she found on Amazon. It's a great book with a lot of different animals in it. And, you know, she's been making uh, these kids' toys for months now. Um, all different little ones. That Most of these are crocheted, and they're, uh, you know, more for kids to play with and stuff. And... She enjoyed doing that, so she, you know, just decided she wanted to make some nice ones for herself and uh, enjoy the challenge. And she did do a double-sized one of hers for my granddaughter, so that was pretty cool. And at least I got to test out the, the router for this project, and uh, actually it worked great. I'm real happy with it now, and, you know, you can see how handy these little lasers are for just, you know, little markings like this and stuff. And this was just a fun little project that I decided to make a video of and share. And you know the old saying, uh, happy wife, happy life. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.